Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, as part of Selenium WebDriver, I am going to practically demonstrate how to handle the dynamic tables with the help of XPath axis. So let's get started. This session is a continuation of the previous session. In the previous session, I showed you practically how to handle the dynamic tables. But while handling that, I have to write a lot of code. You see, here if you see this much of code I have written, from here to here, a lot of logic, a lot of complex logic I have to write in order to handle the dynamic tables. But what we can do is we can make this code a simpler, okay? With the help of this XPath axis. If you are very good with XPath expressions, then you can ultimately make that code simpler, okay? If you're not good with XPath expressions, I recommend you to go through the this uh, XPath expressions that I covered in the beginning, okay? Beginning sessions of this training series, okay? So assuming that you are good with XPath expressions uh, and XPath access concept that I covered in the previous sessions, okay? So this session is for you where I'm going to simplify this code. Instead of writing this complex code for handling the dynamic tables with the simply with the help of XPath access, I can do that. How means here I'll remove all this code. This code is not required. Just keep this expected customer name, Gaurav Singh here. Wherever the Gaurav Singh name is there, I have to select the checkbox field, right? I should told you, right? In the previous session, what we have done, I'll open this. We'll go to the same application that is open cart. So let's go to that application. Let me open that application here. Uh, demo.opencart.com, okay? Demo.opencart.com admin. I have to log in here. You demo demo as the username password as you already know. Already this code is written here in the script, you see. The code is already written for opening this and you know entering demo demo, clicking on the login button. After that, this uh, this particular dialog will come. We'll close that. After that, we are going to click on sales here. You see, we're clicking on sales. And after that, we are clicking on these orders. Once the orders has been clicked, we are coming to this orders table, which is a dynamic table where Gaurav Singh is available here. Okay. Meanwhile, you see. While we are working on this, some, some person has already added a record somewhere, okay, on the front end part of the application. This Gaurav Singh will keep on going down and all the stuff. So without any delay, what we do is we'll select this Gaurav Singh option, okay, even though it is dynamic, we'll select the, uh, this Gaurav Singh option by simplifying the code. That is, what I'll do is I'll create an XPath expression for locating this Gaurav Singh. Inspect this. And I'll create an XPath expression here. That is uh, with the help of form and all double slash form at the rate ID is equal to form dot order order and uh, it will locate this form under that we'll go to the TR. All the table records will come in that which TR we have to go. In that TR there is one TD double slash TD which is having the text is equal to, which is having the text as this Gaurav Singh. Okay, I'll copy this uh, Gaurav Singh text here. I'll manually write it here. I'll make this uh, expert expression dynamic later. So if I enter here and press enter, you see only Gaurav Singh is getting located. I'll take this kind of expert expression. And uh, I'll say expert, uh, I'll create this expert text is equal to, I'll just in double quotes, I'll provide the expert expression. And in place of this Gaurav Singh, instead of giving this Gaurav Singh, right, I'll give this, uh, because tomorrow the Gaurav Singh will not be locating Gaurav Singh. We may be locating some other people, Fernando, okay, Fernando, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the name we want to locate, right, that name we have to give here in this XPath expression. So it cannot be static always, right? Uh, it may keep changing. The name may change, okay? Whatever the name for which the checkbox field should be selected. Based on that, we have to pass the name, right? So in place of Gaurav Singh, I'll pass this, uh, expected customer name. Like this, I'll create a dynamic XPath expression. Now, so I'll give some name means uh, based on that, this XPath expression will be located, uh, will be created. Now, which XPath expression I have to write? I'll simply write down driver dot find. If I have to select this uh, checkbox field where Gaurav Singh is there means, I'll write like this, driver dot find element by dot XPath. Give here XPath text and here I'll append this XPath text with some XPath axis. So if I have to do something here, just see here what I'm trying to do. Here, with the help of this XPath expression, I'll locate this checkbox field, okay? This checkbox field uh, element I'll locate, how means. So here Gaurav Singh is there here, you see TD Gaurav Singh is there. 
but uh, this is here, you see, this uh, TD is here. I'll write down slash preceding, xpath access preceding hyphen sibling colon colon. If I write TD, three elements are getting located. Before this Gaurav Singh, there are three elements. If I give preceding of TD of one, your store is getting located. Immediate preceding is your store, okay? Then TD of two means 1408. If I give TD of three means, you see, this XPath expression is locating the record where Gaurav Singh is there. And with the help of Gaurav Singh record, we are locating the checkbox field in the same row. You see how simplified the code is, right? I have to copy this part. I have to copy this part and append here, okay? Here, in double quotes, append this. Slash preceding sibling, okay? We are dynamically creating an XPath expression uh, to find the record where, you know, Gaurav Singh uh, customer name is there. And for that, we are using XPath access to locate the checkbox field. And now we are going to click on it. Simple. This is how simple the XPath access can simplify your code. You don't have to write very complex logic. Now run the script and see that how many records you see already some record got already, already got added. Now let's see whether this is going to work or not. It's going to select the Gaurav Singh or not. Let's see. You don't have to write any complex logic. If you're good with XPath access, you can do this. Let's see the Gaurav Singh record checkbox field is getting selected or not. You see Gaurav Singh associated checkbox field only got selected. No matter where the Gaurav Singh is there, it will select. So hope guys you understood how to simplify the handling of these dynamic tables or automating the simplifying, simplifying the automate, automated process of handling the dynamic tables using the XPath access in this session. Instead of writing the complex logic here, we can simply use XPath access to simplify this process of automating the dynamic tables and getting whatever we want to uh, get done in the application. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye.